I'm Megan Campmeyer. I'm Lenny Kanaw. And you're listening to The Coral Podcast. So many people know what a coral reef is, but they're not educated on its importance within ecosystems and how much we as humans actually rely on these reefs, whether it be for economical reasons or to feed the growing populations of the planet. But due to lack of education, we are slowly destroying these reefs through pollution, tourism, and improper fishing techniques, which we will go more in depth with over the course of this podcast. But before we continue, I'd like to state the main importance for these ecosystems. So 25% of all marine life at some point in its life has actually interacted with the coral reef, whether it be where it lives where it mates, hunts, or lays its eggs. And if the size and amount of coral reefs decrease, then not only will 25% of all the marine life decrease, but the animals that rely on that 25%, their numbers will also decrease because they'll be missing that source of food. So before we go more in depth on what these problems are within the coral reefs, we're going to play a quick little video that goes a little bit more in depth on what coral reefs are. Under the waves all over the world, there are spectacular ecosystems. Corals are tiny little animals that together can form huge reefs spanning hundreds of kilometers, teeming with diverse life. So let's take a look. The oldest corals lived 450 million years ago. That's long before dinosaurs who clock in from around 240 million years ago. The first members of the human family only appeared around 7 million years ago. Thousands of species can be found living on one coral reef. For example, the Great Barrier Reef contains over 400 species of coral, 1,500 species of fish, 4,000 species of mollusk, and six species of turtle. And because of this amazing biodiversity, we're starting to discover that there is a lot we can learn from coral. Coral extracts have been used to develop treatments for asthma, arthritis, cancer, and heart disease. It's been estimated that coral reefs provide a global value of 5.7 trillion pounds each year, including from fishing and tourism. More than 500 million people worldwide depend on reefs for food, jobs, and coastal protection. The ridges in coral reefs can reduce wave energy by up to 95%, providing crucial protection from threats such as tsunamis. If we were to travel back in time 40 million years, the most diverse place on Earth was somewhere between where London and Paris are now. Today, the Coral Triangle in Southeast Asia holds that claim. So the first main topic we're going to be talking about in this podcast is going to be pollution. And there's three major aspects to pollution. And these three are air pollution, trash pollution, and then sewage pollution. So air pollution is actually a very big problem at the moment due to the increase in the amount of cars that we have on the road and the increase of factory produced goods. And you may be thinking how the air can actually affect uh, these coral reefs, but what the ocean does is it absorbs the excess uh, greenhouse gases that we have in the atmosphere to try and help the climate of the earth. Naturally, the earth goes through phases of heating and phases of cooling, and currently the earth is in a phase of heating. But due to these increased uh, greenhouse gases, it causes it to warm at a faster rate, which negatively impacts all aspects of Earth. So the ocean, in attempting to try and contain some of the greenhouse gases, impacts itself in a very negative way because it increases the amount of molecules that's within the water. So that allows it to increase in temperature a lot more rapidly, and it can also affect the pH of the water and the molecular structure of the water, which can actually be a very negative thing for the animals that live within it. And it also does not help that we are cutting down trees that would be taking carbon out of the atmosphere, lightening the load for the ocean. But since we are cutting down trees and building developments, we are stopping carbon from being taken out 
and we're also increasing the amount of carbon into the atmosphere. So now I'm going to talk about trash pollution. Now this is a big problem because a lot of people aren't educated on what happens to their trash if they don't put it in the right place or what they could use in place of certain products such as plastic which is one of the biggest contenders to the trash that's within reefs and the problem with plastic is the fact that it never actually breaks down. A water bottle for example can break down into smaller pieces which are called microplastics and due to the way the plastics are made and combined together it releases these chemicals that are very toxic to small animals that live within these reefs so if a water bottle was to start breaking down within a reef it would emit these chemicals which the fish would then consume either by eating the microplastics or by uh, swimming through where the chemical is released and this can cause the fish to get sick which can kill the fish or it can leave the fish to be sick and it can be eaten by a bigger um, predator and it can kill that predator. Another contender to the trash that ends up on coral reefs is actually silt from construction and what it is is dust like particles that are picked up and carried by the wind out to the sea and uh, if these particles are pushed out far enough they'll actually land on top of coral reefs and since coral reefs are sensitive to touch then it will cause the coral reef to bleach which will in turn either they will die or they'll become very sick and will take a while to bounce back and be able to support life again. The third contender to pollution is sewage. Now sewage includes uh, what we flush down our drains, uh, what we use to irrigate our lawns, and uh, the canals that we have that connect to the ocean. And within especially canals, that's where a lot of runoff occurs from uh, farmland and even private land where they use lots of pesticides and fertilizers on their crops. And uh, in this runoff from the different chemicals that they use is an increase in phosphates and nitrates and it can cause uh, small dead zones to occur and if a dead zone was to happen over a coral reef it would be detrimental because it would not only kill the reef but it would also kill all the animals that live in the near area of the reef because it causes the water to be hypoxic and hypoxic water is where there's a lack of oxygen because a dead zone is created due to eutrophication, which is caused when there's the increase of nitrogen causing more algae to grow, which in turn makes more oxygen, but it also causes the algae to die because of the amount of nitrogen that's actually within the area. So then decomposers use up all the oxygen to break down the algae, leaving the area with no oxygen left to actually support any life. Okay, so when the water is polluted by things such as runoff from the land, the turbidity levels in the water increase, which means you can't really see anything a couple feet down from the surface. It creates a big problem for the coral reefs because if the sunlight cannot force its way through the shallow water, it disrupts the process of photosynthesis, which in turn causes the coral to absorb less energy. So what that means is that the coral reef's defense mechanism kicks in and shakes off all of the existing algae that gives them their color. So think of your immune system fighting off an illness to protect the body. However, in this case, this environmental disturbance causes the reef to have a negative reaction, which bleaches it, leaving behind a white skeleton. This process does not kill the coral immediately, but without cleaning up the water, the coral will die over time. This is only one factor in the destruction of coral reefs. Now, you may ask yourself, what else could harm them? According to the Nature Conservancy website, ecotourism is another major factor. Tourism creates around $36 million a year to visit these coral reefs. 
While on the beach, careless visitors leave trash such as bottle caps, cigarettes, water bottles, or basically anything made out of plastic. The trash is then consumed by either birds or turtles or is swept into the water. In addition to carelessly leaving garbage everywhere, these travelers are swimming, snorkeling, or diving all around the reefs and harming them in the process. The downside to their vacation festivities is that most people will get tired while swimming and will stand on top of the reefs to rest, unintentionally killing the reefs. Now that you are enlightened by this information, you will hopefully help protect our beaches, water, and coral reefs by throwing away your trash. I'm sure it would never again cross your mind to stand on a reef as well. Imagine if millions of people around the world share this knowledge about coral reefs and the little ways in which they can protect their environment. So the third and final problem that our coral reefs are facing is improper fishing practices and this is bycatch, overfishing, and also invasive species. So bycatch is when fishermen go out and they drop their nets and they're trying to catch a particular type of fish but for example a dolphin can be caught within this net so when they pull this net up they see that there's something other than what they were trying to catch so they will either bring it onto the boat and kill it or they'll bring it onto the boat and after they've separated it from the other fish they release it back out into the water and although that sounds good the dolphin for example can be injured and won't be able to survive on its own and will end up dying now overfishing is when fishermen go out and catch so many fish that it's close to impossible for the species to actually bounce back in a sustainable manner invasive species isn't exactly about how they catch it it's about how they release it there are a lot of people that will go and catch a certain fish that isn't in their area and put it in their aquarium, but after a while they realize that it's not a good place for it to be in their aquarium because it'll start killing the other fish or it'll start dying. So what they'll do is they'll take it out of the aquarium and they'll just put it out in the open water. And the main problem with that being that since it's a new organism there might not be anything that would feed upon it so it would be taking up the resources within that ecosystem stopping other things from being able to use them which can completely knock off the balance within an ecosystem the best way to attempt uh, combating at least overfishing and bycatch is by people who are trying to get their fishing license having to take classes to become educated on uh, what times certain fish are good to catch and what times they aren't good to catch and the different seasons in which these fish are in highest density and the lowest density depending on their population numbers. But with invasive species, it's a harder topic to try and find a solution to because people aren't always going to do the right thing, especially if they've already done one thing wrong. So we wouldn't be able to limit them just because there's only so many people that can only do so many things. But at the same time, these invasive species, we can't introduce any other species to try and get rid of uh, the ones that are causing the problem because then that will cause an even bigger problem and make the ecosystem even more imbalanced. So to wrap up our podcast, we are going to be playing some clips of some of the questions and answers that we got from Sam Hardner from the Conservancy of Naples. Yeah, so my name is Sam Arner. Um, I am the animal care naturalist here at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. So basically what that means is um, I'm responsible for all the animal care of our um, wildlife ambassadors that we use for educational programs. Um, but I also do a little bit of outreach myself and I train interns to kind of help with some of those tasks. What do you think the biggest threats to coral reefs are? 
Oh, okay. Um, I would definitely say in our area, uh, greenhouse gas. So you think about CO2 emissions, all that kind of stuff. That is probably one of our top, but then I also know invasive species um, are a huge thing. So lionfish, for example, um, they like to hang out on reefs, but they also like to hang out on mangroves. And so what they're starting to see is that lionfish um, hanging out in the mangrove areas while they're growing, they're eating a lot of the fish that will eventually move to those coral reef ecosystems. And so they're eliminating um, a lot of the biodiversity within the coral reef. But then also on the coral reefs, they're finding that they're not necessarily as scared of spear fishermen anymore. Um, and they just kind of hang out and snap, like nab things off the reef. And so, um, I would say those two things are probably our biggest threats. And that's where you kind of run a fine line between ecotourism and, you know, protecting your environment. I will say I am a big advocate for ecotourism. I think that if we could find a way to make these tourist attractions more eco-friendly so that they are actually ecotourism, um, then I would say that's our first step. But ecotourism is so great because you can, you're educating people and they can actually see these things. People love, you, you can sit here and talk to people all day about how important it is to do this and that, you know, mm -hmm. but if they're not out there seeing it, they don't get it. And so I think one is educating these people that create these ecotourism companies um, or just these like tourist attraction, you know, if you're, don't just send anybody out there to run a boat for a day and let them drop an anchor wherever, you know, I think there needs to be the steps in place. Um, and I do think law enforcement needs to be stricter and regulations need to be a little more stricter. And so, um, but yeah, I think that them understanding touching coral is bad because one finger touch can kill almost an entire like patch of coral, mm -hmm. you know, just from the pressure alone. And so, um, and that's, it basically comes from educa educating the tour guide. Mm -hmm. And so I think if, again, if done right and with the proper education, it can be a very positive thing. Like winter time, since uh, up north it's snowing a lot, and a lot of people don't mm -hmm. like to deal with that. There's a massive influx of um, people coming down. Does that have a major impact on the amount of pollution that ends up within the ocean? Absolutely. I. Um, it's hard to say whether if that wasn't a thing, would this area just be heavily populated from local people because it I think if we didn't have that tourism we would just have constant local population um, and I think we would not have um, as good of resources as we do now because um, it would definitely be probably a more um, lower class population as opposed to the higher class that is now so I think um, Based on these snowbirds, what we call them, um, they they have the money to make the changes that we need, and so I wouldn't say that it's necessarily super negative that we have all of these snowbirds that come here. Because, but I do think that means more people need to do the educating to get them to understand that their changes are going to help this place that they love to come to when their home is covered in snow up north, you know? And so, um, cause if you look at places like Immokalee and stuff, a lot of them don't have the money to make the changes to help the environment in a positive way, but we can do that here. Knowing all of these problems, stand up and start the change. Start small by cleaning up the beaches and then build from there. The limits are endless and a little will go a long way. By just talking to your friends, family, or anyone about what is going on will make a difference. So spread the word so that in the future our planet will be a better place. And most importantly, 
Thank you for listening to our podcast.